We finished paleomagnetism in the last video. This video is going to be uh, just about finishing out the first half of the chapter. We talked about Wegener and why poor Wegener was picked on. He had this great idea and all this evidence, but he couldn't provide a mechanism for how continental drift occurred. And his great savior, uh, in the sense that he provided the mechanism, was Harry Hest. Now, Harry Hest was a geologist, a Navy captain, and he was part of, um, he was worked during the World War II effort, and he was frequently going back and forth across the Atlantic Ocean. And he was using his depth recorder. Uh, the depth recorder is basically sonar, and it measures um, a beam that's been bounced off the ocean floor. And he actually left his on all the time. He didn't just use it when they were looking for um, submarines or if they were just going through a treacherous area. He kind of left his on all the time. And he found... Um, basically features on the ocean floor that we hadn't really known about. He found mountain ridges, he found trenches. Um, he put all of this together and um, it was published, uh, The History of Ocean Basins. And this provided um, a mechanism for continental drift. Today we call that seafloor spreading, um, but Captain Hess, uh, he called it geopoetry, which was sort of a name that didn't sit too well with scientists. It sounded too much like regular poetry. Um, but basically, this took the idea of continental drift, um, put it together with the mechanism um, of how these features are made and, and where seafloor is made at the ridges, and it's destroyed at these deep ocean trenches, and talks about um, the convection cells within the, the Earth's mantle. And this, together with the continental drift theory, um, basically became what we know as plate tectonics today, the, the two together. And the general idea is, you can see in this figure here, um, you have hot molten rock that uh, goes to the surface, um, comes out along the trenches as new crust. Um, that new crust is sucked down into the trenches through friction with the convection cells, um, which pull the crust um, through friction down into the trenches where it's destroyed and it's sort of recycled again. So that's the big idea of fish floor spreading. Um, the next big advance for seafloor spreading in plate tectonics was uh, two scientists named uh, Frederick Vines and Drummond Matthews. So we've talked about some heavy hitters. These, these guys are heavy hitters. And they used what was a relatively new device. Um, it was a magnetometer. And they dragged it around behind a boat. And they um, found these patterns of um, stripes of different magnetisms, uh, positive, then negative, then positive, then negative, that were centered around mid-ocean ridges. Um, and they were perfect mirror images of one another. And they used seafloor spreading to explain these patterns of different stripes um, in, in the framework of new crust being made, um, being set, whatever the current polarity is at the time. And uh, crust that's made on one side of the ridge will also be made on the other. And this ended up being the single most important piece of evidence that supported seafloor spreading despite the depth recorders. So um, I will talk in class and we'll draw some pictures to explain this, but that's a very important idea. There was other evidence that supported seafloor spreading as well. Um, the age of the ocean floor itself, uh, we had really started to get um, radiometric dating of seafloor rocks in the, in the 60s, um, and what we found was that the youngest rocks, the youngest seafloor is found at the mid-ocean ridge, and the oldest is found at the trenches. The farther away you are from the mid-ocean ridge, the older the rocks tend to be. Um, and the Atlantic Ocean, which hopefully you remember from our ideas about Pangaea, is the newest ocean and the, um, the youngest ocean basin. And it's the most symmetrical with the mid-ocean ridge running almost perfectly uh, north-south through it. And the least symmetrical is the Pacific Ocean, which has a bunch of uh, very odd mid-ocean ridges. They're less mid um, in the Pacific. Generally speaking, the oldest ocean basins are about 180 um, million years old, um, which coincides with when we think Pangaea split up. Um, but meanwhile, the oldest land rocks, can. Um, there's a couple in the Canadian Rockies and some down in Australia where you have um, old land rocks that are, you know, three plus billion years old. Well, why would that be? Why aren't they all the same age? And, and seafloor spreading the idea that rock and uh, ocean basalt is created at mid-ocean ridges, destroyed at trenches sort of makes sense because the land is not being created and destroyed at the same rate as the ocean floor. Other evidence includes heat flow. Um, we know that heat moves through the mantle to the surface. Um, we can measure the, the temperature of different parts of the ocean floor. 
and that the mid-ocean ridges tend to be hottest, that these convection cells um, bring magma to the mid-ocean ridge. And these heat-wise tend to be um, a number, I guess you should know, is that they're eight times hotter at the mid-ocean ridge than anywhere else. Um, and it's coolest at the subduction zone. Um, so the, the heat, you know, dissipates as you move across. Uh, hot spots are the exception to this. We'll get to them eventually, too. Additionally, um, by now, depth, uh, excuse me, not depth recorders, um, the seismometers to measure earthquakes are becoming much more widely distributed across the planet, and we've discovered that there's this pattern of worldwide earthquakes, and that if you put those uh, where most earthquakes occur on a map, it actually matches our plate boundaries very well. Um, longer, Larger earthquakes are found uh, along trenches, and weaker earthquakes are found um, at mid-ocean ridges, which is kind of what you'd expect if you're actually destroying something. It takes more energy. So there's a lot of evidence that sort of supports this seafloor spreading uh, idea. And you need to know the evidence for seafloor spreading as separate from the evidence um, for continental drift. And that's sort of it. This was a really short video. We are basically done with the plate tectonics chapter. Uh, make sure you know the plates that are in the background of this picture. And we'll have the quiz fairly soon.